Hello, good evening. My name is Sergi Adipraja Wijaya. Uh, I'm the, currently the academic executive of Machine Learning and Data Analytics Lab. So welcome to Machine Learning Insider, uh, the first video of the three series of videos that you will be uh, watching. So basically we'll be sharing about um, bite-sized level, um, bite-sized piece of knowledge of machine learning. Um, so I'll be uh, sharing a topic uh, about autonomous vehicles mainly titled, What Do Autonomous Vehicles See? Methods and Challenges. So this actually stems from my um, recent internship in a company called Newtonomy. So recently I worked with the machine learning team and I'll be sharing with you what, um, you know, non-confidential knowledge about um, what they do and what people do in the industry um, on the autonomous vehicle space. So let us first outline some of the key areas of robotics. When we are talking about autonomous vehicles, we're going to talk about robotics because it's basically a robotic system. So in the uh, higher, in the wider scope of robotics, there are three key areas. First, perception. So this talks about what does a robot sense? It talks about disciplines such as, uh, involves disciplines such as vision, image sensors, range data interpolation, tactile and force sensors, and so on and so forth. Second is cognition, so how to make semantic sense and process the inputs. So this discuss, so the discussion will be something along the lines of artificial intelligence for robotics, knowledge representation, motion planning, task scheduling, so on and so forth. And lastly, action, which is the physical realization of the robot's intent. So kinematics, dynamics, control systems, manipulation and locomotion. So really going deep down and dirty with the physical systems of a robot. So of course, when we talk about what does a robot see, we're particularly talking about perception. So machine learning technologies are most visible in this area of research, of area of robotics. Although while it is indeed true, then machine learning technologies are also applied in other areas of robotics, such as cognition and action. But for autonomous vehicle, particularly, one of the most, one of the most visible um, applications of machine learning is in the area of perception. Why is that so? The reason is perception has a lot of uncontrolled variables. There's a lot of variables that we cannot control. And there's a lot of data that is coming in to a robot sensors and we cannot somehow make sense or make um, a rigid sense of a particular, um, what we cannot make semantic sense on what the robot sees. It's very abstract. So that's why um, due to this density of data that is um, coming into you know, robot sensors, machine learning technologies are most well applied in the area of perception. So when we're talking about perception systems, let's go a bit Let's, let's discuss a bit about the hardware behind uh, autonomous vehicle systems. So we have LIDARs, which is high precision la laser sensors that detect fixed and moving objects. We have radars that can provide a less dense um, 3D image of a, of a vehicle surroundings. And of course, we have the good old cameras that can detect and track pedestrians, cyclists, and other objects in the, in the vicinity of the autonomous vehicle. And of course, other um, auxiliary um, sensors. So when we are talking about LIDARs, right, it, it provides the autonomous vehicle with a dense 3D mapping of its vicinity. How it, I will not go through the physical explanation on how LIDAR works but I will give you an intuitive sense on, on how they work. So it measures distance to a target by illuminating the target with a laser light and measuring the reflected light with a sensor. So basically, have, if you have ever heard of sonars, you ever heard of you know, good old radars, so it measures the distance from, it, from the light's reflectance. So in a, in, a, in a nutshell, that's how it works. They might, that might not be the best way to explain it, but definitely you will get 
you know some high level idea of how it works so this is a in your left you will see a physical um, it's a physical lighter it is implanted on top a, of a robotic system usually in the case of autonomous vehicle it will be planted on top of the autonomous vehicle um, and in the middle is a 3d view of what the lighter actually um, outputs so it basically uh, you can see it, it sort of uh, gives a very dense mapping of its um, vicinity and at the right side you have the bird's eye view of a an image that is um, of a mapping that is generated by a lidar so you can see this is very interesting uh, you can definitely increase the or decrease the density of the data that is being generated depending on the use cases but since we're talking about autonomous vehicles so you will assume that it's pretty dense so you see here at the right very interesting at the right image you can see that is a bounding box you can see that it somehow uh, resembles something that is very you know is very square looking yeah um, that is actually a vehicle right that is actually a vehicle that is being projected by the lidar so that's how in a nutshell how lidar works next we have the cameras okay this is particularly self-explanatory um, but I think what I would like to bring your attention to is the bounding boxes the annotations as you can see here this is uh, 3d annotations of the what the camera sees so you have you know you have certain vehicles that are annotated you can also have you know roadblocks that are also annotated so in a way um, cameras can provide very rich information for the autonomous vehicle it's an underrated piece of sensor i would say so let's get a bit technical and discuss what are the tasks uh, that are involved in autonomous vehicle scene understanding so first we definitely have the good old object detection so object detection is merely just to localize objects in its vicinity so you don't really have a um, pixel level um, preciseness so you just localize where it where it is on a on a very in a high level coordinate space in, in a way and also you have semantic segmentation which is um, pixel or point cloud level localization so these are done both in the 2d and 3d domain so first you know object detection I'm sure if you are mostly following our workshops you will know that object detection is a very well explored research topic but i think um me personally i feel that 3d annotations uh, sorry 3d understand uh, scene understanding task is much more complex and it's a relatively less explored research topic so approaches for lidar based scene understanding um so I'm just gonna be outlining several um, several methods that are used for lidar based scene understanding. So mostly, I would assume that you know for two D object detection is very uh, there's a very well explored. So you can search up mass RCNNs and you know YOLOs and all that. But then I will be outlining several for several lidar based scene understanding methods. First, you have point pillars. So this is uh, this particular method is con concocted by a group of researchers from um, metonymy and they have an office in Singapore uh, interesting and so what they basically do is they use a pillar feature net which is one of their uh, main proposals is to instead um, point clouds they, they compact it into pockets of pillars in a way then they encode it to a detection um, to a detection head um, using single shot detectors which is a really relatively popular method you can search it up but their um, main contributions is in their uh, encoding method and also you have AVOT aggregate view object detection 
So they use several, they aggregate different data uh, modalities of data from different sensors. You have the image input, you have the 3D anchor grid, and you have the bird's eye view input. And they aggregate it in such a way such that it, prov uh, it outputs a very robust um, detection. So um, feel free to you know, search it up and research on on how it works in a detailed manner. I'm only just outlining several of the methods that are involved in 3D scene understanding. But you see here, basically, it's very machine learning heavy. It's very machine learning driven, uh, several, some of these methods. And that's sort of in lines on what I uh, was trying to convey just now, which is, you know, machine learning technologies are one of the most visible um, applications for um, autonomous vehicle perception. With some of the methods outlined, let me outline several challenges to autonomous vehicle scene understanding. First is data density. So data density pertain, pertains to um, With some of the methods outlined, let me outline several challenges to autonomous vehicle scene understanding methods. First is regarding data density. So what is data density? So one may argue that data um, image data is a largely denser data modality compared to LiDAR point plots because you can infer more structure. It's more, you can somehow um, say that it has um, a higher degree of information um, so, in a way, lighter point clouds are relatively sparser because, you know, it just on top of just inferring the 3D location, you don't have color information, for instance. So, it's pretty, it's pretty difficult to infer uh, structure from, from a relatively sparser image, from a relatively sparser data modality. So, on top of that, you also need to infer the orientation of an object. So, it is that, that will be an additional input for the networks that are, that are designed. So this is very important because uh, on top of just knowing merely the, knowing the local, local uh, position of the object, you also need to know the orientation because you know in the case for uh, roads, right, you need to know where a vehicle is heading or where a pedestrian is heading. And also lack of generalizability. Most autonomous vehicle startups are working on a specified um, area or a vicinity. So in this case, it's much, much harder for, for them to obtain um, data that is generalizable to different roads. Usually, they operate on two or three cities only. So this calls for a sharing, a data sharing platform. So a lot of companies are looking into data sharing platforms to actually boost their uh, database. And also speed versus accuracy trade-off. This because this is a real real-time system, safety critical system, and needs ample time to react to certain inputs. So speed is also an important in the uh, is an important factor on building autonomous vehicle perception systems. Different from let's say um, you know um, an online classification of good recommendation system, so you can have you there is this ample time for latency for latency, but this for this particular uh, use case, um, you want you would want to minimize the time taken to infer um, certain inputs. But machine learning technologies are just a subset behind the scenes. There are much more. First is data annotation rubric. You know, in, data, in the data annotation rubric, people must come up with specific instructions on what to annotate and what not to annotate. And we also must explain to stakeholders and you know, lawmakers to, you know, on why we annotate or not annotate certain objects. And you know, when does a group of pedestrians, for instance, can, you know, it can just annotate it as like a group of pedestrians, per se. For instance, so there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of like very um, detailed work on getting uh, good data, and that actually is also important to make ourselves to make the machine learning 
um, methods uh, work well. And also sensor configuration. How to calibrate the positions of the sensor to understand the relative positions of objects to the autonomous cars is also important because we are not only um, remember that we are not in the case for images, right? We are only just we only need to know where does an object is in a in an area of an image. However, for a um, for a complex sensor such as lidar, we need to know we need to calibrate it such that we know the relative positions of the objects to the uh, car and also how to select which samples to annotate active learning so what is active learning so let me give you guys an analogy so let me give you guys an example on why selecting rich samples selecting good samples to annotate is important so let me just give you a brief overview on how the data annotation process works so you see here, this is actually a well-segmented image of a car, of a road, of you know buildings and you know the horizon and all that, right? So behind the scenes, on top of actually having models that can uh, accurately infer the uh, you know the segments of images, polygons on you know where does a car, the pixel a pixel level a pixel level accuracy of um, object localization, you first need to have humans that can label those data. So imagine that there's actual human going to every image and colorizing them. So imagine this is a very, you can imagine that it's a very laborious process. Now, let us extend that for 3D point plots. Well, it's an even more laborious process because now you're operating not only in a 2D space, you're also operating on a 3D space. It's going to be an even more laborious process. Now, if you don't trust me, right? So let me give you this figure. So this is the area covered by the whole fleet of Tesla's vehicles. Now, as of now, there there are 730,000 Tesla vehicles that are on the road. Now let's, let's for a minute assume that for every ride, there, for every Tesla vehicles every day, they would, people would use it for one hour every day. It's a mild assumption, it's a very conservative assumption, and that will be 300, sorry, 3,600 seconds. And you would annotate for every half a second and then if you do the math, it will be 525.6 million samples to annotate in just 24 hours. Now imagine company, imagine, you know, a company as big as Tesla, you will definitely want to leverage on the amount of uh, data that they are being, that is generated by its fleet. However, this might not be the case every time. You you won't want to get five hundred twenty five you know million samples every time, every twenty four hours. And that's you know that would take you know first a lot of labor to annotate the data, and on top of that, you would also need ample hardware to be able to build very good models on top of that amount of data that is being generated. So this is where active learning comes into play. So what is active learning? Active learning is a smart way to select and query data that is considered more important. So you can see here, we assume that there is a um, infinite pool of labeled data, right? We can always query un, uh, labeled data from a quote unquote oracle. And we can take that uh, take that subset from um, from the unlabeled pool of training data, label that, label those data, train our machine learning um, algorithm, and then we have our own machine learning methods. And we incrementally uh, go higher and higher, and we have a select subset of, um, a select few of data that we can go with, with to our, we can train our machine learning model on top of. Now, 
you have different metrics for classifications. Um, definitely you have different metrics for different um, tasks. And of course, um, okay, so first, let me, let me take, take a step back a bit and explain how this works. So essentially, there is a metric that quantifies how interesting a particular data is, a particular unlabeled sample is. So definitely you will have different metrics for, let's say, classification. Um, let's say um, if you were, to, you were to want to compare a cat or a dog, you would want to select the images that has the most discriminant features. Same goes with um, tasks such as you know, object detection. You would want to have um, um, images that are most discriminant. So you would have, you know, you want um, a metric that quantifies how interesting, quote unquote, a particular sample is. So you would have advanced metrics for complex tasks. While this is a very, while this is a very um, explored or matured area of research for a number of tasks such as classification, but this is a relatively new and an explored area of research for autonomous vehicle vision. So mature research in a simple task such as classification, it is true, it is indeed true, but for um, object detection, semantic segmentation, it remains a an unexplored area of research. Because why? We need more smart metrics in the vision tasks. We have intersection over union. If you are familiar with object detection tasks, you also have mean average precision. This, um, this metric that you need to keep track of will, uh, will translate to a more complex metric for the acquisition function for the active learning algorithm. And you also need a reliable data pool. So this motivates autonomous vehicle startups to, um, to actually gather the data to make a consortium. That actually, that's actually what's happening now. Autonomous vehicle startups are, not startups, companies are going together, getting together to um, make their own data pool, share their data in, a, in that consortium such that they can uh, operate on a, large, on a larger data pool such that the machine learning algorithms and even the motion planning algorithms can perform better and they have ample uh, data pool to learn from. And that would conclude my presentation on autonomous vehicle, what do autonomous vehicles see? I will see you guys on the next series of Machine Learning Insider. Thank you.